everyone, this is Bruce from New Life and I wanted to talk about cancer today and I wanted to have a little rant as well. So the other thing I wanted to talk about is the Alistair Tackler magazine which has a little editorial and an advert of mine in it in the July 2019 edition. So I'm going to read my editorial to you because I posted something on Facebook. What I have here in the magazine is Tragedy can strike suddenly and plunge your life into despair. If an initial traumatizing event is not resolved, it lives on reflecting in the outer world as mental and physical disease symptoms such as anxiety, grief, eating disorders, self-harm, cancer and repetitions of similar events. Stop treating only the symptoms. Emotional memory, healing, joy and peace can occur just as suddenly and be reflected in a changed outer world. I've based that little write-up on my own experience using Fast EFT or Utaptics and based on a very interesting book by a guy called Stephen Parkhill called Answer Cancer and I will talk a little bit about that now. I posted this ad, I think the same ad on Facebook with a kind of similar little write-up and I got uh, some pushback from a lady that I don't know but she really really didn't like me saying that cancer can come about as a result of suppressed emotions and I guess uh, that she was trying to protect people from me but I need to push back because the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge and I really, really don't like people having um, potentially life-saving interventions denied them and I don't like, yeah, I don't like people having horrible lives because of lack of knowledge and so I need to push back on this because uh, there is evidence very good evidence that cancer can be as a result of suppressed emotions. And so I'm going to go through some of that evidence with you now. And the first, um, I like science. I practice alternative therapies, but I love science. And so there's some science on this. And I don't know if you've heard of Kelly Turner, but she wrote a book called Radical Remission. And she defines radical remission as when someone's cancer goes away without any Western medicine, or after Western medicine has failed, or using conventional Western medicine and alternative healing methods at the same time in order to outlive a statistically dire prognosis. So that's any cancer with less than 25% chance of five-year survival. So that might be stage one pancreatic cancer, because that generally has a really bad prognosis or I guess stage four breast cancer. These kind of spontaneous remissions happen more often than we think. And so she estimates that for every one published case, there might be a hundred or more that go unpublished. And so Kelly Turner was working as a psychotherapist and she was counseling cancer patients at a major cancer research hospital. And she came across her first case of what she calls radical remission. And then she dug into the literature and she found that there were over a thousand cases published in medical journals and that cases have included um, nearly every type of cancer, including breast, prostate and lung. But the doctors would sign people off and they'd say, well, they got better and we don't know why. But nobody bothered to ask these cancer survivors what they thought they might have done to get better. So Kelly Turner did just that and she went back and did her PhD in cancer research and she traveled around the world for a year looking for as many radical remission survivors as she could find and asking them one simple question, why they thought that they healed. And then I think she uh, went on to spend another 10 years studying radical remissions and then wrote her book Radical Remission, which is a New York Times bestseller. And in it, she discusses the nine key factors that she found 
were common to all or most of the radical remission survivors. I think some of them focused more on some aspects than others, but most of them did a little bit of all nine. And their kind of body, mind, spirit interventions, which is what I'm all about, and they included releasing suppressed emotions, uh, radical changes in diet, deepened spiritual connections, that kind of thing. I'll, I'll go into that in a bit more detail a bit later on. So there's no guarantee that cancer patients who practice these nine behaviors will be cured, but we're not going to know whether implementing them deliberately will help us, will help patients, unless we try it. And yeah, so scientific breakthroughs have often occurred by people seeing an anomaly and then instead of ignoring it, investigating it and so i you know i guess that's how we got things like penicillin and um uh, insulin for diabetics that came to someone in a dream and so it's worth considering so cancer really does seem to be an emotional illness in the experience of many people that i respect and whose techniques i've already used to great effect in other areas in my practice and one of these people is Stephen Parkhill, and he's a very well-respected Christian hypnotherapist and the author of the book Answer Cancer, um, which rhymes if you say it with an American accent. But in this book, he describes a number of case studies from his own practice in which cancer and other physical illnesses appear to have been rooted in, especially in early childhood trauma, including fetal trauma. And yeah, really, um, we do seem to be able to recall things as subconscious memories from when we're in the womb. And I have already seen convincing evidence of this in my own practice. Uh, so I really do think that that's a thing. So the first thing I would do if a client came into me who was struggling with cancer is I would go to the emotional roots of that. I would use uh, fast EFT, Utaptics, Stephen Parkhill's regression techniques, and um, probably a bit of David Snyder as well, to go in and deal with the emotions, which are likely, the, the, the person's likely to be struggling with emotions anyway just from having the disease so I would deal with the stress and the anger and the fear and the bitterness and the sadness and those types of emotions. Uh, Kelly Turner only deals with suppressed emotions in chapter five of her book but that would be my the first thing that I would do. The next little piece of information that I'd like to look at here is Dan Butner's Blue Zones book. So Dan Butner's book, The Blue Zones, details National Geographic funded studies on five populations around the world which were found to have a much higher than average number of healthy centenarians or people over 100 years old. And these areas that they studied are in Japan, Italy, Greece, California, Costa Rica. And one of these areas is Okinawa in Japan. And traditional Okinawans do not have to adopt the nine key life principles that Kelly Turner's radical remission people switched to because they already had them built into their lifestyle and culture. And guess what? In spite of many of these old people having lived through the horrors of the Second World War, traditional Okinawans were found to have six to twelve times less heart disease than the United States, two to three times less colon cancer, seven times less prostate cancer, and five and a half times less breast cancer. And it seems that they did this by living a healthy lifestyle. And again, I'll go into the details a bit later and how very many of them map the, the, the nine key factors that Dan Butner lists map quite interestingly onto Kelly Turner's nine key things that her radical remissionaries did. The next thing I want to talk about is, is just to segue away a little bit from the emotional issues and talk about diet. And the fact is the Okinawans diet consisted of 98% plants. But there's an even longer lived population, which is the vegans amongst the Seventh-day Adventists in Loma Linda in California, whose diet is 100% plants uh, and almost no processed foods. And 
Sadly, modern Okinawans will not have the same health and longevity as their older folk because there are already about a dozen Kentucky Fried Chickens on the island and obesity is increasing. So I'm just going to read out the, uh, just in case you're interested, I'll, I'll have them on the screen here as well, but Dan Butner's nine common factors that he found with all of the five blue zones and they are as follows. Moderate regular physical activity, stress reduction, moderate caloric intake, a plant-based diet, moderate alcohol intake, especially wine, engagement in spirituality or religion, engagement in family life, engagement in social life, and having a life purpose. So now I'm going to have a quick read of Kelly Turner's nine factors, key factors that her radical remission people tended to use. And these were taking control of your health, following your intuition, increasing positive emotions, releasing suppressed emotions, using herbs and supplements, radically changing their diets. Uh, they deepened their spiritual connections. They embraced social support and they had strong reasons for living. And it's very interesting that these map quite well onto the Blue Zones activities. So finally, I want to move away from mind or emotional healing and talk about body healing, physical healing, and what we put in our mouths, which was uh, something that both Dan Butner found that his long-lived, largely cancer-free people focused on, and what Kelly Turner found as well. And I'm going to talk about Dr. Michael Greger, who is probably the world's foremost expert on science-based nutrition because he reads every English language nutrition journal in the world and he condenses the most applicable, interesting findings from all these peer-reviewed studies into blogs and videos for public consumption for free. Uh, he doesn't sell supplements, and I just really like the guy. And if I want to find any sort of cutting-edge nutritional health information, I go to nutritionfacts.org generally as a first port of call. And so I'm just going to talk about his book. His He also wrote a New York Times best-selling book called How Not to Die, in which he has a chapter on each of the 15 causes of premature death in the United States. And here in the UK and Ireland, they're very similar. And he shows that a plant-based diet can be used to uh, treat, prevent, um, often reverse these 15 top killers in the United States. And so... I'm going to go through just a little list of things that he talks about in the book. He has several chapters on cancer because it's broken down by type. And a lot of these interventions would work for different types of cancer. Inflammation tends to be a very big factor in very many diseases. And so in his chapter on colorectal cancer, he mentions turmeric, which is a natural anti-inflammatory and uh, I guess a quarter teaspoon of turmeric a day is safe for almost everyone. There are some potential counter indications for taking turmeric, but they're few and far between, and it's only if you if you take a huge amount every day. But always mix your turmeric with black pepper because it increases the efficacy because it helps it to stay longer in the body. And so a whole food plant-based diet is very good for colorectal cancer because um, I think it has to do with the roughage. And then the corollary of that is avoiding red and processed meat, which tend to encourage the growth of gut bacteria that produce carcinogens. And then foods rich in phytates like beans are a good idea. People have this, uh, some nutritionists have this phobia about phytates, thinking that they're poisons, but they might even have anti-cancer properties. Berries, including strawberries, seem to have anti-cancer properties. Um, pancreatic cancer is one of the worst cancers to be diagnosed with in terms of prognosis, but prevention is better than cure. 
and it seems that viruses that can be contracted by handling and eating chicken may increase risk of pancreatic and liver cancers. So that's a very good reason not to eat chicken, aside from the fact that chickens tend to be treated so, so badly. It's good for chickens and people not to eat chickens. Esophageal cancer or throat cancer is another cancer that you really, really don't want to get. And so low-fat diets tend to reduce acid reflux, which is a contributing cause of Barrett's mucosa and then sometimes, sadly, throat cancer. And a fiber-rich... So here's prevention again. Please get your children onto a plant-based diet, parents. A fiber-rich whole food plant-based diet can prevent hiatus hernia, which is when the stomach pushes up into the diaphragm and then leaks acid into the esophagus. In addition to that, a whole food, for the same reason, because of the roughage, a whole food plant-based diet can prevent diverticulitis in the intestines and varicose veins. And all three of those things, um, hiatus hernia, varicose veins, diverticulitis, are often caused by constipation, just all that pressure in the abdomen of constipation. So finally, Um, Michael Greger talks about breast cancer and there was a study in which blood was taken for women on a standard American diet and dripped on breast cancer cells in a petri dish and the blood from women on a standard American diet did kill some cancer cells but the same women were then put on a whole food plant-based diet for two weeks and so they acted as their own controls and their blood was taken again and dripped on the cancer cells in the petri dish and 20 to 30 percent more cancer cells were killed by their super powered supercharged plant power blood and researchers attributed this to reduced levels of cancer promoting growth hormone igf1 which is likely because they weren't eating animal protein which is meat dairy products and eggs. Cruciferous vegetables are another really uh, big anti-cancer food group because they produce sulforaphane and broccoli sprouts. If you can grow your own broccoli sprouts and eat eat those, they have, I think it's something like a hundred times more sulforaphane than broccoli florets. But if you are cooking broccoli, it's a really good idea to chop it up fairly finely about 45 minutes before you cook it because sulforaphane is produced when the plant is damaged. There's an enzyme, some kind of biochemical process that produces sulforaphane and that process is stopped by cooking by heat but the sulforaphane that's produced is not destroyed by cooking. So uh, chop your broccoli up 45 minutes before you cook it. If you're making vegetable soup, blend your broccoli and leave it to sit for 45 minutes before throwing it in the pot and you get lots more sulforaphane from that. And sulforaphane, at least in a petri dish, seems to suppress the ability of breast cancer cells from forming tumours. So who knows, but that if you eat lots of broccoli and kale and cabbage and especially broccoli sprouts, women might save themselves from having to experience breast cancer. Melatonin seems to be cancer preventive and the way to get more melatonin is to sleep in the dark. Make sure your room's very dark when you're sleeping, but that could help you not to get breast cancer. Ground flax seeds are part of Michael Greger's daily dozen foods and lifestyle habits that he recommends for everyone, which are in the book. And you can download an app and you can go to my website and find out more. Just go to newlife.com forward slash daily dozen. But flax seeds have phytoestrogens, which are called lignans. And these tend to dampen the body's own estrogen, which can help with menstrual breast pain, it can extend a woman's menstrual cycles by about a day and so because throughout her lifetime if she's on about a tablespoon of ground flax seeds every day it reduces the number of periods that she has, it would also reduce the amount of time that she's exposed to estrogen during her lifetime and 
could thus reduce her risk of getting breast cancer. And then finally, soya is similar because it lowers breast cancer risk and it also reduces menopausal symptoms. So there again, Japanese people eat lots of soya and they don't have very much breast cancer and they don't tend to have horrible menopause symptoms either. So there you go. Considering all of this, what seems to happen in the West that instead of investigating these things that might actually work, that might actually prevent people from getting cancer in the first place, and who knows if they might not help people in their recovery as well, we just go in and cut pieces out of people without dealing with the original emotional issue as well. And if there is some kind of mechanism whereby the body has these suppressed negative emotions and it has to come out somewhere, you know, there is a theory that cancer is kind of your subconscious mind saying, hey, you have to sort this out. You need to go in and fix these emotional issues. Um, Stephen Parkhill talks about people using cancer subconsciously as a means to get rid of themselves because they feel uh, very often there are memories of parents not wanting children that get embedded very deeply and then after a number of a pattern of sensitizing events people can manifest this in later life as cancer that's a theory and I, I think there might be something to it. I've seen it myself anecdotally. But yeah, so we tend to cut people up and we pump poison into them. And the statistics that I was showing earlier just show that this is not working. Uh, our society is sick and we need to heal it. And that's what I hope to do over the next number of years. Um, I want to verify all this for myself semi-scientifically. And so, yeah, I want to work with people with cancer and just see what we can do. And so please share this with others who might be prepared to try something new and something which is very promising. And so I have the tools to that I can use to help willing participants in the, the programs that I'll give them to achieve all of the nine blue zones behaviors and all of the nine radical remission key factors and at the very least i can help people with cancer to make peace with painful memories and emotions deal with the stress of having the disease itself switch to a diet that's been scientifically proven to reduce the risk of cancer and a host of other diseases and adopt a lifestyle which has been proven to be associated with lower rates of disease such as cancer and and others so that's my little rant over so thanks for watching i'll see you next time bye if you found this video useful please make sure you've clicked the big red subscribe button also please click like and share this with others this will really help me to help more people click the bell button so you get a notification whenever there's a new video if you'd like to have a free half hour chat with me, please feel free to get in touch. You can contact me via the New Life website, the Facebook page, or by phone. Talk to you soon. Bye.